Did y'all miss me? We're back. Bringing back questions of the day. We're going to turn it into questions of the week. We're going to be dropping a video every Monday on questions that you want to know about your golf cart. Hey guys, Ryan with Golf Carts Modified. Bringing back questions of the week. Used to be questions of the day. We're gonna do a little flip flop on it. We're gonna do it every Monday. It's gonna be a five to six minute video on questions that we get all the time on our Facebook pages and our Instagram. You never know, these questions could help you or somebody that has a golf cart. So make sure to subscribe and like. With that being said, we're gonna jump into this. First question back is, what is the best way to wire 12 volt accessories to my golf cart? All right, so obviously we have two different types of carts. You have gas carts and you have electric carts. Gas carts, they're gonna be a lot easier to set up, guys. You already have a 12 volt battery in there. I don't recommend running everything to the top of that 12, 12 volt battery. I do recommend you can go on Amazon or a bunch of other websites and you could find fuse boxes that have six to eight different fusible links. They're super easy to wire. You have a positive coming in, you have a negative coming in, it's a, it's a pretty easy setup. So, save you a lot of headache in the end. It's a lot easier to wire in. It's a lot safer when you have a fuse. So, that setup is easy. It's, you know, that one's not hard. You got one battery. All right, electric guys. This question gets brought up a lot. What is the best way to wire 12 volts to your 36 or 48 volt pack? My answer is always gonna be a reducer but that kind of comes as a loaded question or a loaded answer, I should say. Guys, when it comes to reducers, you get what you pay for. If you buy a $25 or $30 reducer on Amazon or anywhere else, you're getting a $25 reducer. If you're gonna be wiring expensive sound equipment or expensive LEDs or expensive rock lights, don't scrimp and get the cheapest reducer you can find. Find a quality reducer. We run the Reliance. That's what we put in our carts, Travis and Corey. That's what we run in ours. That's a much better reducer. And I promise you, you will save yourself so much headache when your reducer works correctly. The problem with reducers, if you buy a cheap one, and I've seen this happen with expensive ones too, if you wire your reducer in and you do not run it to your ignition switch or if you do not put a toggle switch on the inline side and you leave your reducer on all the time it's going to kill your pack so make sure when you get these you wire them up correctly most of these are pretty simple most of them are going to be a five wire or a four wire connection most of the new ones that have the directions with them are pretty straightforward they're pretty easy to follow okay sticking with the reducers i get this question that goes with this a lot what all can i plug into my reducer if I'm building a cart and I know I'm gonna have a lot of 12 volt accessories, I do the same step that I told the gas guys. I get a reducer and then I put me an inline box that has all my fuses. That way I can label and I know if I have headlights, if I have stereo, if I have light bars, if I have rock lights, it just makes it a whole lot easier and it's a whole lot safer. You always wanna put a fuse on anything that you have going out external. All right, the next question is a question and a question. Can you run two reducers? Yeah, you can. Most people are not going to need that much power. You're just not going to have that much on your cart. Most of you guys are going to be running headlights, tail lights, stereo, maybe a light bar, maybe some rock lights. A reducer is enough to cover all of that. If you're going to be running a really large stereo system, I would probably recommend upgrading to an extra 12 volt battery. It's just going to make life a lot easier. And it's not that difficult to charge. Project Soundwave is going to have 130 amp reducer that's going to run all my main components in the cart. And then I have to run three 12 volt batteries to keep up with the amplifiers in this cart. So there is a give. So guys, one thing I can't stress enough is I'm going to give you a tip on reducers and why I recommend them. It's going to save you time and it's going to save you money in, in the end. It's pretty much an insurance. I don't like it when people jump from battery to battery to pull 12 volts. Uh, it's not good on your battery pack. It can cause damaged cells. You can break plates in a lead acid battery. You're making the system unbalanced because you're pulling voltage from two batteries instead of all six. Even if you have four 12s and you just 
plug into 112, you're still pulling more juice from one battery than you are the entire pack. It's never a good idea. Can it be done? Yes, I don't recommend it. Will it get you by in a pinch? Absolutely. But guys, at the end of the day, it can end up costing you a lot of money. Uh, batteries nowadays are not cheap. Even six volt batteries are getting expensive. Eight volt and 12 volt batteries are definitely expensive. You definitely don't wanna to have to replace an entire pack of batteries because you were trying to get your lights and your stereo to work. Anyways, if you found this useful guys, let me know. If there's something I missed, drop me a comment. We'll come back to it. We're gonna keep doing these. We'll hit on something every week. Be short, quick, to the point. Guys, make sure to smash that bell. Give us a like and a subscribe. If you're not following us on Facebook, go check us out on Facebook. We've got 35,000 members and growing. If you have a cart for sale, check out our other page, Golf Carts for Sale. Pretty good page. It's for sale only. Guys, as always, check us out on Instagram. I even got a TikTok now. Go check us out on there too. Guys, remember to go modify, have fun. Catch you next week.